Hello, Los Angeles, and welcome to another episode of Mondays with Mindy. I am joined, as always, by my co-host and co-producer, Christian Brescia. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we are delighted to have a conversation with my friend, Natasha Gregson-Wagner. Natasha is an actress, author, and producer, born and raised in Los Angeles by her mother, the actress Natalie Wood, and her fathers, you heard me correctly, Richard Gregson and Robert Wagner. She has two fabulous daddies. I'm sure we'll talk about that at some point, or maybe not. (laughs) You may have seen her in such films as Another Day in Paradise, High Fidelity, Two Girls and a Guy, and David Lynch's Lost Highway, as well as the television shows Ally McBeal, House MD, and Chicago Hope. Not a bad resume. That's right. In 2016, she co-authored the coffee table book, Natalie Wood, Reflections on a Legendary Life. This year, Simon & Schuster published her memoir, More Than Love, An Intimate Portrait of My Mother, Natalie Wood. Simultaneously, she co-produced the HBO documentary about her mother's life, Natalie Wood, What Remains Behind. Christian, after so much controversy about her mother's accidental drowning in Catalina, this film just beautifully reminds us what a powerhouse and trailblazing career her mom had and finally allows her family for the first time to candidly open up and share their private and painful feelings about Natalie Wood's passing, the falsehoods that (laughs) followed and kept shadowing their lives, and how they're actively keeping her real legacy alive. Natasha lives in Los Angeles and Michigan with her husband, actor Barry Watson, and their daughter, Clover Clementine. (laughs) Ah, that kid is so delicious. (laughs) I'm so looking forward to gabbing with Natasha today. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, we are excited to welcome to the show, Natasha Gregson-Wagner. Hi! Hi there. Hi, Hi, love bug. You look so cute. Ditto. Ditto. <laughs> you guys, you guys safe and sound there? Shh. Yes, we are. Yes, we. I am up in northern Michigan, and it is very calm. I've just been on the lake with my daughter, which is why I am kind of gummy right now. <laughs> um, anyway, yes. Awesome. So we start each episode. Uh, Christian and I came kind of came up with these 20 questions that we put in my little trusty Jonathan Adler secrets canister. Okay. And I, I pick, you know, like five, you know, random questions. Okay. And we do a little get to know you. Just go, for, go from there. All right. That sounds fun. Okay. Question number one. What's your guilty pleasure? Ooh, guilty pleasure. Um, I don't know. I feel like I haven't. Well, I haven't watched that much TV lately. Oh, wow. you are <laughs> normal. Uh, maybe a guilty pleasure would be ice cream. That's a guilty pleasure. Yes. Yeah. It's a guilty pleasure. Particular soft flavor? Serve. I'd say soft serve ice cream. Oh. Like a my swirl. Absolute- Ooh. Chocolate when I'm on the farm. vanilla swirl. Soft mm. serve. Oh, my gosh. That when I'm on the farm good. in upstate New York, they have a place we go every single day. Yeah, so good. That's okay. definitely a guilty pleasure. Yes. Um, How do you get inspired and who inspires you? Oh, my gosh. Um. <laughs> Well, I think I get inspired just by whatever is around me. I mean, right now I am up in by the lake and near the woods. So when I walk in the morning, I feel really inspired just by hearing like the birds. And, you know, I saw a little bunny rabbit running earlier. And um, so I would say nature inspires me. Definitely. Mm. I like nice. And personal? A person? Um. I mean, I would have to say my daughter Clover is an inspiration. Just her freedom and her her kind of comfortable way with who she is 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 inspiring mm. to me. Love that her. inspires me right now. Thank yeah. you. I needed that. She was time. <laughs> um, okay, we're we're diving deep there. When was the last time you cried? Oh, probably, probably recently. Oh, maybe a few days ago, Clover was crying. Um, my husband's in LA right now, and so we're we've been we're apart Still here. from him for a couple of weeks, and so my daughter's really missing him. And sometimes when she 
feels like crying or emotional, then I I get <laughs> like that too. But I try not to because you're not supposed to be doing that so much. So yeah, There's probably no su- just a couple of days ago. I miss him. Yeah. There's no supposed to. Yeah, there's just You're perfect. Two. Um, what's the best advice you've been given and who gave it? My dad um has always said to me, my Which dad one? my daddy Wagner, beware uh-huh. of the strength of the weak. And Ooh. I I I think about that a lot. Especially with the toxic media and the toxic president and so much, so much toxicity. I, I think about how weak people can pull you down if you don't put a bound. Oh my there. God, Natasha, that is, it's I just felt that in right? my button. Yeah, yeah I know. Oh, he's always said that to me ever since I was like a teenager. He's always said that. Huh. Okay. Now I'm dying of curiosity. You might have to ask him where he heard that or, Saw that. I have, that's pretty spectacular. I've never heard that before. I know. Uh, yeah, I know. I do need to ask him. Um, I think it was an actor that that gave him that, but I don't know who. So I do need to ask him. You're right. I'm. I'm just curious because that's really it's a good one, right? And powerful. Yeah, yeah it's kind really of amazing. Mm-hmm. Okay, last question uh, for this stuff. Oh, what assumptions do people make about you that are wrong? Oh, you know, I try, That's really, loaded. <laughs> I try really hard not to get into that thing where I predict what other people think about me, but I would say that my default is to be overly nice because I'm always worried people are going to think that because I grew up the way I did or something that I'm going to be, you know, have an attitude. So I, I definitely, I, I, I diffuse with kindness or nice, over, ni- overly niceness. Being overly amenable, which I don't need to be <laughs> all the time. I know. I, I agree. You but, are one of the nicest human beings I know. Well, thank you. I mean, I'm not Much really always than I. that nice, but but I, <laughs> I, I definitely <laughs> default to nice. It's my default. Yeah. No, I get it. I, I really get yeah. it. Being a people pleaser, I, yeah. I really identify mm-hmm. with that. So, you know, I don't know if you, if we've talked at length about this, but the reason and I, Christian, Christian and I kind of decided to do this was that during this stay at home experience uh, that still keeps on giving, um, the one thing that I was really like yearning for and missing was being around my creative people, because that's how I get inspired. Other creatives of any and every kind Mm -hmm. inspire me and to not be around it and just be it was challenging. And yeah. so uh, he said, why don't we talk to some of them? <laughs> Ding! Here we are. <laughs> so, here we are. Exactly. So here you are. guys are so, friends before this, and then you kind well, of came for up For 25 with this? years. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For 25 That's years, so we've been cute. friends. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and Christian's an amazing producer and software engineer and, you know, this, this stuff. This, yeah. like, oh, gosh, it's his crack. And I am, you know. 90 years old or Amish, whichever one you <laughs> decide to pick technically. But anyway, so I, I thought of you immediately, not only because you're a fellow actress, but um, also because there is this deep dive that you did um, the last, I'm going to say like four or five years, where you decided to write this memoir mm-hmm. and also co-produce uh, and really helm. I know you had an amazing director and yeah, yeah. he did a magnificent job. You helmed this documentary, this HBO documentary about your mom. And it wasn't just her story and her legacy, but, you know, it was a creative project. Uh-huh. Is that Clover? Yes. You want to say hi real quick? Yeah. Hi, Clover. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, what, what made you finally decide to write the memoir? And then, I mean, I don't want to say simultaneously, but almost simultaneously it was, start the project. It did, yeah. Well, the memoir took obviously a lot longer than the documentary because I was, had been writing it for about three years, like off and on and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then, um, but I think, I think I just started to feel safer in my own skin and, out in the world probably because I of Barry and Clover and 
getting ready to turn 50 and <laughs> all the emotional work I've done on myself. And um, I, it just, it started to, I, I started to feel like when I spoke about my life, I liked the way it felt to talk honestly about what I had been through and, and who I am and how I feel about things. So, and then I, it was like the universe, I think, really wanted me to do it because then I met Laurent and we, uh, you know, pitched the doc to HBO and they said yes. Mm -hmm. And then everything sort of, you know, it's that thing where like you make a decision and then the doors kind of open mm -hmm. without you having to, to try very hard to open them, which is yeah. not very often the case. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah. so, so, um, it was just, I think of a, a process of maturation really. Yeah. My own well, personal and, maturation. Well, and I have to say, you know, the memoir, which I'm holding up right now for those who are just listening is such an amazing read. Thank I'm holding you. it really close. Cause again, I'm technically Amish. Pink is <laughs> Simon <favorite> Schuster. Color. <laughs> Please. <laughs> um, is much more personal in that it's not so much about your mom's legacy as about living with your mom and then living without her yes. and your life and your trajectory as a creative, as a person, as a daughter, as a mother, all that stuff. Um, and the film is much more, um, like I said in the intro, really reminding people, you know, just the legacy of your mom and not to concentrate so much on her you know, departing, but rather this breath of work and career right. that somehow seems to keep getting, if not forgotten, not talked about as much as all the other salacious bits stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. For sure. So mem so memoir first. Um, you are extremely vulnerable in the memoir about your um I just want to talk to you as a as a fellow actor. Your deci your decision to leave college and do a deep dive yeah. into acting, and we share an acting coach in Larry Moss. Yes, yes. Who, he's if you're going to deep dive, boy, yes, that's who you want to hang on yeah, to. Absolutely, <laughs> love him so much. And that and that work came at a very decent clip for you. Uh huh. Um, yes. And so I, I wanted to ask you about talking about that because you really don't for the most part in your day-to-day -day life identify as an actor. You and I have had conversation and yeah. arguments about it. Yeah. That you yeah. are. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't feel that I am anymore at all an actor. Um, I, I do feel that maybe one day I'll go back to acting. Um, but I don't feel the pull at all these days. And why is that? Um, I think mostly because I don't want to be on a set. I don't like being on sets. I find it, I feel trapped on a set. And wow. when I was doing the audio for my book um, in my closet up here, we had mm -hmm. to make myself a little studio because I couldn't go and do it in a studio because right. everything was closed. Um, I really enjoyed that process. And so what I how I feel is that I love acting and emoting and feeling and characters and all that stuff. But I prefer it when I'm in a dark room where nobody can see me. I don't have to wear makeup sort of like mm -hmm. today where I didn't realize I was on camera. Um, and, Sorry. and so that feels liberating, but hmm. sitting in the makeup chair and getting my makeup done and then waiting around to all of that, part of the acting process I just right now I can't I can't take that part of it mm -hmm. I'd rather and be with my daughter I'd rather you know I just it, it I didn't have clover till I was 41 I just want to be a, around for like all the the details like the minutia the really mm -hmm. boring parts of motherhood like I I really like those parts and if I was on a set I wouldn't be missing all of those parts. Yeah. So right. it's just a choice that I'm making. And, you know, I'm married to an actor. So I'm always know. running his lines with him and I'm always <laughs> doing his auditions with him and when he's working, all that. So it's not that I don't, I mean, use I, the tools. Yeah. I definitely, I think that I live like an actor, like I feel mm -hmm. like an actor, but I don't, 
I feel like the emotions of an actor. Like I was saying to Clover the other day, we were walking through the forest and and she definitely has inherited the performance gene. And I said, you know, there's this amazing quote. I think it's Stell Adler. I can't remember who said it. I don't think it is Stell Adler, but somebody, it's in Larry's book. It says something like, you need, when you're on stage, you need to listen like the animals in the forest. Mm, and so mm-hmm. I was saying that to Clover because when we walk through the forest, you know, we hear the birds and we hear the rustling and we see a deer or a bunny or even a fox sometimes and or a snake, you know, a non-poisonous snake. And so I felt like she, that would resonate for her because A, she's a child, so she does listen like that. Yes. And B, now she's hearing all the animals in the forest and then see she is interested in performing. So like, I'm always thinking about acting stuff. Yeah. Have you gotten bitten by the per- producer bug having produced this documentary? No, Did that part feel- I have not. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. I mean, this was a labor of love for me to produce Obviously. the documentary. Yeah. Yes. And I, and I, I consider myself more with the with the documentary. I was the hostess of it, you know. Like I, yeah. I got the people to come to the party. I invited them to the party, and I tried to make them feel. At, and you interviewed most and of I them. And I interviewed some of them, and Laurent mm-hmm. did a lot of them. Mm-hmm. But and I tried to make everybody feel, you know, safe where they could have their own experience, you know. Um, I think if anything, I more have been bitten by the writer's bug. That's what I like. Oh my God. Bravo. I prefer, I like to be alone in my room and write into my, in my office up here. And when I go Mm -hmm. on walks, like I've, I, I'm, I'm, I have an idea for something else. So I think about that when I'm, when I'm walking and I don't know, I'm in sort of like a, in like a, even though I'm a Libra and I'm very social and I love my friends and all that stuff, I've been in a very solitary place. Well, I, I've noticed that the choice to, obviously I understood your and Barry's choice to go, you know, to Michigan when this happened, but I was, you are an insanely social creature and have been your whole life. So I was going to ask you yeah. like, how are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> but apparently I mean, thriving. I, I think, well, well, luckily up here, we have this small community of friends that we've had for a while. So they yeah. were up here too. So we were able, we have nice. been able to social distance with them. Um, yes. But like I was talking to my best friend, Amanda, yesterday, and I said, I was like, I'm so sorry I haven't called you lately. I just, I want to call you every day, but then I don't want to call you because I just don't even have anything to say right now. <laughs> you know, like sometimes. I think a lot of us. Yeah. yeah, or in that same position. I totally identify with that. Yeah. yeah. But you're doing better than you anticipated, no? Oh, yeah. I mean, especially now that the weather has, well, you know, we got some <laughs> chicks and we planted a vegetable garden and we may okay. stay up here. I don't know how long we'll be here, but right. I'm happy up here. But I'm, and I'm, I'm certainly protected from a lot of the drama that's going on <laughs> in the yeah. world, you know, because we're in this tiny little town. Um, but yeah, it's an intense time. It's a painful time. It's, it's a yeah. sad time. There's so much loss everywhere. And I think even if you haven't experienced it directly from COVID, it's impossible not to just feel it, you know, yeah. you like yeah. feel the collective grief that is yep. all yeah. around. Grief and uncertainty. I have to say that's been the bug that has bitten most of me and my friends tushies mm-hmm. is that, that level of gen. Uh, just on the cellular level of uncertainty is anxiety provoking. Yeah. Absolutely. And, yeah. Yeah. And having so a, I, I'm with you. Having like a flexible mind, uh, you know, where you can pivot, where you have to be able to pivot quickly. I mean, that I, I feel yeah. like that muscle is a muscle that we haven't used in a really long time. Um, yeah. I mean, even for us, like when we first got up here and not a lot of, stores were open I was like okay so in my pantry I have a lot of beans and (laughs) parts of palm and lots of noodles and you know what am I gonna make for dinner tonight corn so I made a lot of like corn fritters and you know nothing that exciting and um so 
yeah, just pivoting and, and not, yeah, there, there's no room. It feels for entitlement or, yeah. for, Agreed. you know, you have to just, yeah, you just have to f-ing deal with it and get on with your life. And, and you can't Agreed. really like, you can't really cry about it. I mean, you can cry about it, but you can't whine about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. R- right. Especially being in the positions we're that in. we're in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, not to be tangential, Trudy, but I do want to go back to the documentary because okay. what I found the most um, touching and um, revelatory was that really for the first time I felt you and your dad and well, your family, mm-hmm. people who you chose to have talk, talked about uh, things that you guys hadn't talked about before. And I'm wondering how hard that was for you to do or had you just made the decision that you're going to you're going to tackle tackle this once and for all? Well, yes, I had made the decision I was going to tackle it once and for all, definitely. And, you know, we had never really spoken about the, the, the you know, the controversy of that night or whatever. Um, and with my stepdad, with my daddy Wagner, I, you know, I'm, I love him so much and I'm very protective of him. So I wanted him to feel safe. Yes. But I was asking him to step outside of his comfort zone. No. And I was, you know, the producer and the interviewer, but also his daughter and lost the same thing he lost that night in a way, you know, the most important person to us. Um, So it was definitely um, a balancing act. and, And I feel like Laurent did a really great job in the editing room of like cutting out a lot of my awkwardness because I, I think that I definitely, Please. you know, was like just dancing around a little or yeah, or being overly, <laughs> uh, you know, awkward is really the word, um, <laughs> yeah. but, but yeah. we shot, well, we shot felt- that interview um, over two days. Well, it looked like, and again, it's just appearances and, and, but you know, it looked like not only he was comfortable in doing that, not that he was like, oh, I'm so ready to do this, right. but it also was, a there looked and appeared to be a level of, if not relief, more of, yeah. I'm at the age now <laughs> yeah. where, and I'm with my daughter. So yes. here I go, you know, and I, I just felt relief for him. Definitely. I, I wish he could have given himself a little earlier. And yet I don't know if anyone would have treated it uh, the way that you did. So again, yeah. bravo is what I'm trying to say. That's the yeah. long I, way And I think version. you're right. I mean, and my dad is somebody naturally who's very much like, this is who I am. This is my story. <laughs> this is what I think. I don't give a lot of f- about what you, you think yep. about me. I yep. am who I yep. am. And so yeah. he is that person. But certainly doing it with me and – especially because he walked me through so much of my heartbreak, you know, mm-hmm. um, it was more meaningful, I think on that level for him. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I do have to say, you've talked about serendipity and the timing of it and just like ready to do it. I mean, obviously with your father being so ill and to see him and Julia, like it was, mm. it was lovely to me. Yeah. It was very full circle, not just regarding your mom, but your dad as well yeah. Yeah. was able to say and he have a little piece uh, from his ang- – and I just feel like what a love letter you gave him too, uh, I feel. I felt that way watching it, you know? Thank you. Yes. I, I – I, you know, that was the last time I saw my dad when, when we did that interview. And I knew Amazing. pretty much that it would be the last time. Um, and um, I – and he was very proud – that he was able to, you know, be well, well enough in the, in that moment yeah. to talk, to speak. And um, I was just talking to my stepmom yesterday about him because it's almost going to be a year. It'll be a year on <sighs> August 21st. Can't believe it. And no. she was saying, because he had been so sick for like three years and she was really his caretaker. And, and she was saying that now she's starting to remember when he wasn't the good so, stuff. Yeah. The good. Yeah. So she's actually grieving oh. him in a much more intense way than yeah. she had when he first died. And it was almost like a relief that he was yeah. set free from the that suffering. Makes sense. 
So um, that makes sense. And for those of our listeners who have been living under a rock, um, <laughs> uh, people normally when you say two daddies, you know, it's some gay couple that's you know fabulous <laughs> right. and have, have children. But you were one of these very lucky people in the late seventies, early eighties who had two daddies that are not gay, but these two <laughs> dynamic, successful, um, gorgeous men. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, and just uh, hats off again to your mother and to, to your them. who you call Daddy Wagner that, you know, the three of you really did, you know, it's very unusual, Natasha. So uh, if I, what would you say to our listeners with that, that you want to say about that relationship? Um, I want to say, because I think a lot about that relationship. I am a step parent. We co-parent. Mm -hmm. my, my husband, Barry, and I co-parent. I have two stepsons. We don't co-parent with each other. We parent together <laughs> but right. then we yeah. co-parent with their mom um and it's hard it's really hard and um my dad's and my mom and my dad's they made it look really easy i wish mm -hmm. i had it that easy um after my mom died you know my two dads they just whatever issues they had with each other i never knew about those issues they they kept Bravo. those and so they are both really magnanimous. When I got married the first time, they both walked me down the aisle. You know, there's never been any of that petty jealousy. They've mm -hmm. always been so respectful of each other and, and um, just real examples of, of how to be a good human, you know, and a good parent. Yeah. Well, and I have to say, you've done such a beautiful job in the book. Uh, yes, it's coming from your 11, 12, and 13-year-old self, but those first few years without your mom, that dance that th your two dads did, yeah. um, I just think you've written about it so beautifully, where there was not, not only not competition, but um, when disagreement, I mean, really deciding to put, you know, you guys first, mm -hmm. uh, the, the kids first. Yeah. And where you should live and how you should live and what you should have and what you shouldn't have. And I just think that really is um, you've just done so beautifully describing that in the book. I really got such a, such a taste um, okay. of that very unique. Uh, yeah. Bravo. Thanks. I mean, that was really a question in there. Speaking of, more like speaking of the book, if you don't mind, I'll give you guys a chance to take a breath. Um, we are actually going to yes. take this time to mention that the book, More Than Love, An Intimate Portrait of My Mother, Natalie Wood, by Natasha, our very special guest, is our very special honorary sponsor of today's podcast. Uh, the memoir is an emotionally powerful tale of a daughter coming to terms with her grief, as well as an unforgettable portrait of her famous mother in the vanished Hollywood. It's available for purchase on Amazon. We will add the link on mondayswithmindy.com. While you're Thanks, there, Pat. check out, of course, while you're there, check out the podcast, which is available on all major podcast networks. If you want to see us on YouTube, you can click the link there as well. Watch the show. If you like what you're seeing, give us a thumbs up, tap the little bell and subscribe, please. Leave us your comments. We're always reading them. We like hearing from everybody. Uh, like I said, we will have more show notes on our guest, Natasha, available on the website. So if you want to connect more with her, if you want to follow or learn a little bit more about her, as well as connect to her books and hopefully some of the future books she might be writing, we'll be uh, tacking those on there as well. Uh, uh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Thank you, Christian. You have a, you good, you you a, have a good voice, Christian. Oh, thank you Oh my God, much. the best. Yeah, you he didn't think you'd be sponsor today did you yeah, i'm happy i i <laughs> from one sponsor to the other <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i love it i love it um so uh about this writing mm -hmm. is it is it more books is it a screenplay is it what are you I what are you writing or well, what is your is your idea I haven't Fiction? Started, i have an idea for um a play actually Okay, that I love. So that's my idea. Um, and then also a little bit of a short story. Uh, you know, I'm not, it's all just like. Mm -hmm. Still coming together. Ruminating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in that ruminating phase. Um, I just know that I enjoy the process. And so I, I want to do more of it. But I'm giving myself this summer to not work, really. I mean. Right. Yeah, the the book and the documentary are coming out in the UK in July, and then in um, oh, and then in France in September. So I'm doing like a lot of European press or whatever, sure. but but that's that's all I'm doing. So I'm not yeah. like I'm not pressuring myself to be working on a new project just yet. 
Well, yes, because I was just going to say this is all relatively new as yeah. far it, as it is. Yeah. And also, I think with uh, with the uncertainty back to that word of, of school, I may be teaching Clover again in the fall. Yeah. And yeah. then that will be that is <laughs> turned out to be a full time job. Yeah. <laughs> because no kidding. It's hard when they're that young. Yeah. They can, yeah, you can't, I can't just imagine put them in front of the the Zooms and they, they you know, they need the interactive yeah. with a human yes. in the room. So. Would you ever consider or have you ever given thought about writing any children's books now that you're kind of growing this little person? I Yes, I have. And I love that question. And um, it's funny, my, my godfather who wrote The Boys in the Band, he passed mm-hmm. away on March 7th unexpectedly. Oh, oh and- such a loss. He was so, he was, he was so incredible, was Natasha. He so great. I know. Yes, he was. And so he left his you know, all of his everything to me. And so I got, I've been getting lots of um, his treasures. And um, after Kay Thompson died, he had written a lot of the Eloise books for Hillary Knight. And so Clover and I were reading the one, um, one of the ones that he kind of filled in. And I was thinking about a children's book as I was reading that because Eloise makes me feel close to Mart. And of course, yeah. who doesn't want to read about Eloise because she's like right. so awesome. Yeah. Um, and right. so I was explaining Eloise to Clover a little, a little more. And then I, yeah, I was starting to think about um, a children's book because we're always telling stories about yeah. the woods and who lives in the woods and what's going on right. in the woods and, you know, yeah. Yeah. feeding her imagination and yeah. letting her, yeah, process or, that or imagination. Being like, Clover, you better get off that iPad and go into those woods right now and use your imagination, you know? Yes, yes. Because that happens well, too. Of course. Reality. The, you know, the other area of creativity that many people don't know about you, I'm so glad you wrote a little bit about it, but really it's you and I have talked about it um, because I just think your taste level is par excellence, um, is interior designing. Yeah. And while, you know, you don't have, a, you know, your shingle hung out on a storefront, <laughs> no. you know, you you really, I love it, it. so I totally much how it. you create, how yeah. you express yourself creatively. So talk a little about how, what that does for you. And I just love making spaces, creating spaces. And, um, and while Barry's been away, actually, I've been getting some stuff done up here that that he wouldn't want me to be doing if he was here because that means the painters are in the house and the woodworkers yes, are yes. in the house. So like he left and I quickly got all those people to come over to do all those things that I've been waiting to do, you know? Yeah. And then I just arranged all the bookshelves yesterday and I, I don't know. I feel like I'm, I'm a Libra, so I am ruled by Venus and I definitely like beauty, but I'm also, I have lots of Virgo in me. So I like order and I, I feel like when I create those spaces, it gives me like I'm able to breathe kind of. And then yeah. like then I can read a, a book or then I can get right. to work. But if my space isn't as I want it to be, mm-hmm. I can't do the other stuff. Well, you talked about in the book how your first, you know, grown up space, your little apartment on Doheny. Yeah. That that kind of became your first, you know toe dip into the world of interior design and you've kind of never stopped. Yeah, definitely. I, I, here comes Clover saying hi again. Hi Hi, Clover. Hi. We're almost done. It's okay. (laughs) She she can be patient. Yeah, of course. Um, We're talking about decorating spaces. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Yeah. And, and I, and there she goes. And I definitely, yes. I don't know. I just, I love it. I feel like I... You're good at it, though. I mean, it's one thing to love it, but you're really, really good at it. Well, I am I think I really... I can see when things need to be balanced or whatever. Like, I, I love to go to my friend's house and organize their bookshelves, you know, with, like, not just <laughs> books, but, like, tchotchkes and... Tchotchkes. Right. I mean, That's I don't know what it is. That's it's just... Yeah, balance. that it's got to be... It's and, and Barry and I have that. He's a Taurus. He's ruled by Venus. And so we're both... Me too, me too. Uh, yes, yes, you... Of course, you know that. Um, and so we can talk about design or talk about aesthetics and aesthetics and, and it's like a point of connection. Yeah. Nice. But it also, it, se- it seems that it stemmed from you. I mean, for me, I absolutely got it from my father. That was, you know, mm. um, his interest. And so I know that in you describing, um, oh, my mom, the yeah. house, 
the house you grew up in, but also not just her, but her her friends' homes and your friends' homes. That that yeah. way, that that maybe I got it from going to these amazing houses. You mean, like or we're inspired been, by that? Inspired, yeah. And my mom actually had um a Natalie. It was she. It was called Natalie Wood Interiors, and she had like you know, and she decorated I, some of her friends' houses. Um, I was so shocked to. Have, to um, read funny, about that but I think that she um but, but her taste was much more opulent than mine mine is more pared down I think you know yeah um but she was constantly re- re- redecorating you know new new fabric and new wallpaper and I mean yeah. now if I lived in the house that I lived in growing up I would I would oh. be in I would be having an anxiety attack all day long with all the patterns and, and with the color a declutter. and the yeah. wicker furniture. And, you know, it's like, oh, my God, that was – but it was just – that's what it was like back the then. sign of the times. Yeah. I was just going to say it was the times. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I want to thank you. Oh, my you God. You are and will continue to be so delicious. Thanks. And I, I adore you so much. Thank you. I'm sorry that I didn't realize that we were on camera and I didn't put on any makeup or anything. Then. It's okay. Hey, I, I, as my mom calls this, I am in one of my Oaxacan schmatas. Well, you look so, so um, great. Both of you guys please. look amazing. <laughs> and you I do. like the silver headphones. They're really cute. These are the headphones oh, I use to record the book. Nice. They're very professional. Oh, yeah. Very bougie. Yeah. Bougie. I like it. I like it. Well, ladies and I gentlemen, love you, man. See you when you come home. I love you too. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, stay for safe. for having me. I well. love you too. You both wanna, of you. Thank you. We want to say thank you to our very special guest, Natasha Gregson Wagner, for joining us today. Like you said, if you want to learn more about her, go ahead to mondayswithmini.com. We'll have all the show notes up there and some Bye. links so you can find a little more. We'll say Bye, goodbye to Clover, Clover too. Bye there. <laughs> we'll see you guys soon. Bye, be lovey. Well. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. So that was Natasha. Yes. Pretty, pretty interesting yeah. story. I mean, her story in general is just fascinating, but, you know, to hear how she's moving through the world with all of this, I think was really interesting too, huh? Yeah. She's one of my few friends who we grew up together in Beverly Hills and had mm-hmm. that, that kind of 90210 lifestyle for real. Yeah. Um, that she's got, just got such a great head on her shoulders and is not a slave to money, property, and prestige. Right. Like a lot of our, I won't call them Peers. friends, but people Peers. we grew up with have yeah. become. Yeah. So that's always, I think you, it's You could tell she was kind of like friends. salt of the earth. I was like, yeah. Very. You're good people. Very. It all adds yeah, up. Yeah, she is. And I also thought it was pretty interesting. You know, we've been hearing pretty consistently over this first season that people, or at least a lot of our guests, are developing a greater sense of their creative self as they're becoming, quote unquote, more comfortable in their own skin. She's now said mm-hmm. it. It's been said how many times prior to this one that I I had kind of had like an epiphany for myself where oh I I found that I was more comfortable with my creativity as I got older and I got more comfortable saying I made that and I like it if you don't like it that's fine yeah I mean, listen know? we've all either been by ourselves or with our ex- you know extreme nuclear family yeah. and a lot of time with self yeah and I think for creatives you either go insane right or you start thinking and branching out and using it. And yeah. 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 I thought that was was neat. Um, Well, Mm -hmm. this was another great conversation. I am excited to get this to our listeners and our viewers and uh, Mm -hmm. believe it or not, Mindy, we only have one more episode left in this season. Then we've got a small little hiatus before season two. I mean, it's hard to believe almost 10 weeks have gone by. I know. Congratulations. Bravo. And yes, yes, next week's episode, I'm really excited um, to have our guest to close it out. But we've done it, kiddo. Yeah, congrats. We're we're doing it. And thank you. This has been such a fun little journey. I'm so thankful we're still doing it. And oh, yeah, we've we got have listeners just started. and viewers and everything. So thank you to all those at home that are taking the time to so listen to us it. and watch it. Um, it really is. It comes from the bottom of our hearts. We really appreciate it. And we love being able to do this with you guys. So we're looking forward to season two, hopefully season three, season four, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, we'll see everybody next week. Until then, be safe, everybody.